Right now, Norfolk police are on the scene of a shooting on A Avenue. Emergency dispatch tells us one person was shot. It happened after 10 o'clock, and we will update you as soon as we learn more. The Coast Guard has suspended the search for a missing swimmer in Virginia Beach. The Coast Guard sent us this picture of their search pattern. We're told a woman between 20 and 30 years old with blonde hair, a pink top and jean shorts reportedly entered the water but didn't come out. And this happened around 345 yesterday morning. Virginia Beach police crews are still searching. Today, the Portsmouth community came together and demanded a stop to gun violence in the area. Residents and city officials attended giving back to the block. Our Adriana De Alba was there and spoke to some people at the event. Adriana. Jacqueline, the event comes just days after a Portsmouth man was allegedly killed by his stepson. Today, the community came together to say a prayer with his family, calling for an end to gun violence. It was an emotional moment in Portsmouth for a family who just lost their loved one this week. More than 100 people uniting in prayer after Jamel Howell was allegedly killed by his stepson. Today, his mom shared a few words about the loss of her son. He was my best friend. He was my baby. And he continued to pray for our family and good pray for joy. The event calling for people to put guns down and support the youth. We can curb violence like this, man, with us. Sure. Daryl Redmond put it all together, hoping to make an impact. He just got out of prison after serving for 20 years. When does this cycle have to stop? So as I said in them cells and understood what was going on, it came to me the realization that when I get out there, I'm going to make a change. He says that change starts with supporting young people, surrounding them with activities and positivity. One thing I believe in is the power to change. And I understand that it's three things it takes to change. You have to change your environment, you have to change your thought, and you have to change your behavior. The event drawing community leaders like Portsmouth Council member Shannon Glover. We have to, as a community, come together. And we have to be honest with each other about what is going on in our community and share the information. You know, in the community, we know our neighbors. We know where things are happening. And if folks see things that are not right, that are going to cause harm to others, we need to engage and report that to the proper authorities so that everybody can participate in being safe. As a family mourns another life lost to gun violence, people in this community are reaching out and spreading love, hoping things will get better. And the man who organized today's event says it's just the beginning of his mission. He plans to bring the youth sports and activities. And tomorrow, leaders with the Building Resilience and Communities Foundation will take a group of kids to a museum in D.C. This is all an effort to make a difference. Adriana de Alba, 13 News Now. And the country is still reeling from the mass shootings in El Paso and Dayton. Here in Hampton Roads, hundreds of people attended an active shooter training workshop hosted by the Virginia Beach Police Department. Dana Smith has an inside look at what the attendees learned. It's called the Active Threat Citizen Defense Workshop. I want to be ready. <laughs> the goal? To help people prepare for the worst. It could be in a movie theater, a restaurant, the mall, any public place. Virginia Beach resident Tim Garvin attended the workshop with his co-workers. He said he works at a local university and attends church regularly and wants to be prepared just in case something happens. You don't think it's going to be a place that's going to be in danger and yet you've seen what the situation has been. So. Today's training comes a week after two mass shootings in El Paso and Dayton and just months after the May 31st shooting at the Virginia Beach Municipal Center. It's always on my mind. People think that just because it happened here, now it just got real, but it's been real for quite a long time. Master Police Officer David Nieves led today's training. He and his team taught attendees how to respond if confronted with an active shooter. We teach them how to fight, how to run, how to hide, uh, objects they can use to defend themselves. This is the fifth year the police department has hosted the training. We can't be there all the time. We wish we could. And so we want to make sure that they are prepared to defend themselves until we can get there. Dana Smith, 13 News Now. One, two, three. We love you, Nikki. Today in Norfolk, friends of Beatrice Nicole Warren Curtis came together to celebrate her life after she was killed in the mass shooting in Dayton, Ohio last week. Warren Curtis lived in Hampton Roads and worked for Anthem. She was visiting Dayton when the shooting started. So when I got that phone call on Sunday, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable to hear that my friend 
of 16 plus years is gone due to some tragedy that was injustice. Her funeral was held today in West Virginia at the same time as the vigil. A man accused of murder is back in police custody after getting mistakenly released. Police were looking for this man, Jaquan Anderson. He was in Norfolk court yesterday morning because he is accused of killing a Norfolk State University football player back in 2017. Police say at some point Anderson was released and they don't know how it happened. Officers brought him back into custody later that night. Anderson will be back in court on Monday. Tonight, accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein is dead from an apparent suicide. Authorities say he hanged himself early this morning in a New York jail. He was awaiting trial, charged with conspiracy and sex trafficking, and faced close to half a century in prison if convicted. ABC's Megan Tavrizian has the latest. Jeffrey Epstein's body in that van seen leaving the medical examiner's office today. ABC News first to report the disgraced New York financier's death by hanging. Staff at the Metropolitan Center discovering him at 639 this morning. They say they tried to revive him. Paramedics later rushing him to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Less than three weeks ago, he was put on suicide watch after being found unresponsive in his cell with marks on his neck. But ABC News learning for some reason he was taken off suicide watch nearly two weeks before his death. Tonight, some of his accusers, like Michelle Licata, say they are outraged. There were so many people that were looking forward to seeing him put behind bars for the rest of his life. And it's not only his accusers who are furious. Attorney General William Barr demanding an explanation. Barr saying Mr. Epstein's death raises serious questions that must be answered. His death coming one day after thousands of pages of documents were unsealed in federal court related to a 2015 defamation case against an Epstein associate, Ghislaine Maxwell. In court filings, that accuser, Virginia Jaffrey, says she was an underage sex slave for Epstein and was directed by the associate and Epstein to have sex with many, quote, powerful men, including numerous prominent American politicians, powerful business executives, foreign presidents, and other world leaders. Those allegations have not been proven. Tonight, that accuser's lawyer, who represents other alleged victims, writes in a statement, quote, the fact that Epstein took his own life 24 hours of the unsealing of detailed and devastating documents and exhibits in Virginia Jeffrey's lawsuit against Ghislaine Maxwell is no coincidence. There will now be two federal investigations into Jeffrey Epstein's apparent suicide, one by the FBI and another by the Inspector General. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, New York. A white supremacist group member sentenced to more than three years in prison for attacking protesters at the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville two years ago is asking a federal judge to free him on bond while he appeals. Benjamin Daly is one of four Rise Above movement members who pleaded guilty to a riot conspiracy charge. Daly wants to be released into his parents' custody in Oregon and monitored electronically while on house arrest. The National Highway Safety Administration is investigating complaints of malfunctions with the front passenger airbag sensors and more than half a million Subaru Foresters. The investigation centers on 2016 through 2018 model years. There have been 51 complaints about the system. The sensors are designed to detect when there's someone riding in the front passenger seat and then turn on the airbag so it's ready to deploy in a crash.